Hi, welcome to 16-bit squid. Today we shed some ink on the Sony EVDT1. This device was manufactured by Sony Japan around 1988 and weighs around 6 kilograms. When it launched, it cost a whopping 1490 euros in today's currency. A lot of money, but that money bought you a lot of functionality. This TV is a fully working 5-inch portable TV with a built-in PAL tuner, but it also features a video 8 player and recorder, meaning that you could record and play back your own TV recordings like you could with a VCR at home. TVs of this size from the early 90s usually had quite coarse shadow mask tubes, while the EVDT1 has a high quality Trinitron display tube. Without going into extreme detail on how Trinitron works, the advantages were that Trinitron displays were slightly brighter and sharper, but they reflected a bit more, as you can clearly see. The channel Technology Connections has a great video about Trinitron and how it works. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. On the EVDT1, the label on the front left gives away that this is a Trinitron display. But if this TV would not have the label, one can easily recognize a Trinitron display by checking the screen curvature. Trinitron displays usually only curve horizontally while remaining flat vertically. I've picked this TV up in a local thrift shop together with a Sony Video 8 AF camera and some Video 8 tapes. The portability of the screen combined with a camera made a great portable video studio, as viewers on Video 8 cameras usually only offered black and white playback. With the EVDT1 it was possible to eject the tape from the camera after recording and immediately check the footage on a high quality color screen. On the back of the unit we find a coaxial in with an analog tuner, a video in, audio in, mono sound only though, and the audio and video out so you can hook it up to a larger screen. On the right we find an AC in and a DC1224 volt in making this TV suitable to run off a battery in a boat or a car. In theory, you could hook up the EVDT1 to a larger TV and use it as a Video 8 VCR only. On the side we find contrast, brightness, saturation and vertical hold adjusters. And hidden under a flap there are some extra controls like input select, mute and tuning. On the front we find the on and off switch, controls for the Video 8 player, the tuner, volume buttons, a record switch and a headphone output. The pause button on my unit is quite worn, making me believe that this particular EVDT1 was indeed used as a portable video studio in combination with the Video 8 camera. Hidden behind the front panel there are timer controls for the built-in Video 8 recorder, meaning that you could use this device as a smart standalone VCR and record broadcast TV programs. It features a clock and a timer, allowing you to program the unit to switch on and record TV programs as they would start, without physically being there to hit the record switch on the TV yourself. Basically, the unit could do everything one would want to do with a VCR in the late 80s, while also being a portable Trinitron TV. All these controls on the front are quite helpful, as my unit unfortunately came without a remote. The remote that came with the unit is a Sony RMT443, which I might pick up later. Enough talk now though, on to the fun stuff. I've hooked up a PlayStation to the screen. You can now clearly see how small the TV really is. Firing the TV up, it works, to a certain degree, but you can clearly see that the image isn't displayed correctly. After a few minutes of fiddling, I start smelling rotting potatoes, or rotting fish. This usually means a leaking capacitor. Since the unit is now 31 years old, this isn't an unexpected issue, so I'll have to open this up and see if I can fix it. That's it for the short introduction to this fascinating piece of late 80s tech. Finding information on this device wasn't too easy, and while there are some available on eBay for high prices, these units are quite rare. I'm therefore excited to fix the unit up and show you how it works in all its former glory. It might make a cool portable retro gaming screen even. If you like this video, please leave a comment a like or subscribe to the channel. Have a good one.